Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I the, My audio might not be as good because I'm doing this on my laptop, so I have a more noisy environment, but I have my microphone here. Uh, today's video is about, I switched to Gentoo, and I wanted to just talk about it a little bit. So I can even prove that to you um, with a fast fetch. Look at that, look at that, OS is Gentoo 2.15 x86 64 um, and yeah this is real hardware I switched to Gentoo as you can see here too um, so yeah I switched to Gentoo and I wanted to talk a little about like what I thought and stuff so first off this is something I would have never done if I never created Rebos so <laughs> For those of you who don't know what Rebos is, and hold on, I think my mic volume might be a little much. There. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what Rebos is, Rebos is a tool I made for basically uh, repeatability for any Linux distribution, and it's uh, NixOS inspired. And I can show you my generation, so here, like, yeah, Rebos was absolutely crucial, and you can see that there aren't that many generations because one, this is a newer install, and two, this is the last of my main machines that I installed Gentoo to. The first uh, one was my little uh, laptop, which is an HP Stream 11. This is a System76 Pangolin. The second device was my desktop, and this was the third to get Gentoo. Um... And Rebos is absolutely, like, absolutely required for me to use a Gen 2 because there is so much to do, like, to set it up just to be usable. I can show you my Rebos configuration for Gen 2. Um, so, first of, all, uh, first of all, like, I got my manager order dot toml. I've got initial packages system, I've got OpenRC boot, OpenRC, and um, inside of my gen, I have all my packages and stuff that I use. You know, self explanatory. And I have my hooks, my imports, you know, just a regular Rebos configuration. I manage my system services and packages with this. I can show you all my managers that I have in here. I have cargo, flat pack, initial packages, OpenRC, OpenRC boot, and system. Um, and hooks is where, like, this is the meat and potatoes of my Rebos configuration for Gen 2. So, for example, uh, here in post build, I just have some stuff like patching Wayland sessions, and the reason I do this, uh, I can also do this with X sessions too, is um, uh, here on Gen 2, it's sort of like other distributions that are not things like Arch or Ubuntu. Like if you launch Hyperland, for example, on Gen 2, instead of typing Hyperland in a TTY, you have to type Dbus session run Hyperland. So. I can show you what I mean by that. So like instead of hyperland, which is normally how you would run it on things like Arch, you need to run um, dbus run session, like that. And if I press enter, then it'd start like a little hyperland window, but I'm not gonna do that because it'd also kill my bar and stuff. Um, so yeah, hooks. Um, Here's my post initial packages hook. This adds repos and stuff that I use, like the Guru repository, the Steam overlay, the Brave overlay, um, Simlink Rust stuff, so like, so I can use Rust. Um, yeah, and I also have my pre system packages add. This is just a bunch of notices because uh, on Gen two there are. You need to unmask packages sometimes, and uh, it, to unmask to unmask packages, you can pass in the dash dash auto unmask and the dash dash auto unmask write flags to emerge. 
But in order for those to actually take effect, you have to run sudo dispatch dot uh, sudo dis sudo dispatch dash conf. So I have that notice in my hooks. And I have pre build. This is this is the biggest script out of all of these. So in here I've got um, a bunch of stuff. So here at the top I'm just defining a bunch of pads. Um, I'm basically saying if the system files TMP path doesn't exist, create it. If it fails to create, exit with a failure exit code. Um, this is just like stuff, video cards for the machine, package use, machine path, user. Um, this is notify the user if the first, uh, first file and second file are different and tell the user the third argument. So this is just a little function. Uh, notice user ID like this is just that but with notice uh, DFIE sudo you know just a bunch of stuff and then down here what I'm doing is I'm getting my video cards and then I'm basically generating on the fly a new make.conf that I overwrite the one in Etsy portage make.conf with this one um, and then uh, PKG is use path to PKG is use TMP path, you know, just a bunch of stuff. And yeah, essentially what the script does is move around a ton of files. So that's my Rebos config. Now for Gen 2, like specifically, um, you're gonna have to use things like use flags and package unmask, like accept keywords. So the way that works is, for example, use flags you can specify um, use flags in make.conf so like down here of my use flags and these are global use flags so every package I install will use these use flags um, and then you also have per package use flags so for example let me go into my pkgs file and let me actually open it with nano since nano has syntax highlighting for this so for example for the package syskernel slash install kernel I have dracut and grub this just sets up dracut and grub for my gen2 install uh, and then I have a bunch of other like miscellaneous stuff for example waybar for whatever reason waybar is barely functional out of the box so you have to add all these use flags yourself and uh, also whenever you see these minus and then a use flag that means exclude that use flag because not specifying a use flag doesn't mean it's not there uh, ex in order to exclude a use flag you have to add a minus before it um, so yeah, just a bunch of use flags for usability. For example, I removed the ncurses GPM driver just because that was causing some circular dependency issues and stuff. Oop. I forgot that this is nano. Um, so yeah, use flags. And another reason use flags are really nice is like, for example, uh on arch if you wanted to install ew the ew package you would have to do like either ew or ew dash wayland on gen2 the ew package has a wayland use flag so you can use the same package just different use flags um, and that's really cool because that doesn't mean you have to have a whole freaking new package for a package with different like compiled options and stuff you can literally do that yourself and Gen2 also has binary packages too. So if like your use flags match a binary package that exists, it will get the binary package if you enable the get bin pkg feature in make.conf, which I can show you what I mean by that. So like up here, I have um, features, features get bin pkg. And yeah, so when I do that, then emerge will try and get binary packages whenever it can and fall back to source packages if it cannot find them. There is also a flag for emerge called get bin pkg only, but I don't recommend using that because it will completely disregard your use flags.
Uh, then there's accept pack like accept keywords, and what those are is um, accept keywords z z z auto mask auto unmask or actually it'll do pkgs. So what this is is it's um, basically so unmasking can do a different a couple different things. For example, um, it so some packages you're by default not able to install and the reason that is is because the gen 2 packager packagers haven't tested it yet so they mask it what that means is you have to unmask it in order to install it and then there is certain versions of a package are masked so like for example to get the newest version of helix i had to uh add the amd64 accept keyword you know to unmask it so like this is how I unmask the package Helix. Um, so prior to this, I got an older version of Helix because the newer version was masked. So I had to unmask it to get that. Same with Alacrity. Like I was using the version of Alacrity that still used YML. Uh, so I unmasked it so I could get the Tommel version. Um, so yeah. That's brief introduction to use flags and keywords and stuff. Um, another thing is like g g the Gen 2 installation. It was breathtakingly like I I don't know how to put it into words. It's not the most mind blowing thing ever, but it is really fun. Basically, what the process looked like is I booted up a live environment of Linux Mint, and then I partitioned my disk. So, like, I did a wipefs-a, and then the drive, uh, and then I did a cfdisk-z, and then the drive name, like, slash dev slash, you, you know, the drive. Um, and then I partitioned the disk myself. So, I can actually show you um, cf, let me just do an lsblk. Um, NVMe 1N1. So I CF disk uh, dev NVMe 1N1 sudo. So um, yeah, so I had to partition the disk myself. And what my disk looked like is so. When you first partition the disk after wipefs-a, I pass in the cfdisk-z flag. Just add a dash z. Um, I don't really know what that does, but I guess it's recommended. So I made a new GPT partition label, and then I added some partitions. I have a 500 megabyte EFI system partition. I have an 8 gigabyte Linux swap partition and a 1.8 terabyte Linux file system. And that is my partitioning scheme here. Um, and it's working and also um, uh, my file systems I have uh, fat32 or vfat I don't really know if they're any different so I have vfat as my EFI system my Linux swap is a swap file system obviously uh, and then my Linux file system I'm actually using XFS um, I'm doing this because someone on the Gentoo discord server named Emolo was saying like XFS has a bunch of benefits. I don't like apparently XFS has a thing where it can reuse data that's shared between files. So I don't know, that's kind of cool. So it's great for big files and stuff, apparently. Not very good for small files, but every file system has its trade offs. So yeah, that's my partitioning scheme. And essentially, so what I did was. In Linux Mint, I followed the Gentoo handbook, and I just want to let you guys know that you should never uh, follow a video tutorial for installing Gentoo, because the handbook does change. If you want to install Gentoo, you should always, always do it via the handbook, and uh, dang it, I don't have internet access. Uh, one second. Just had to connect to the internet real quick. Um, 
because by default, like this new Gentoo installation wasn't connected. Also, I recommend if you're reading the Gentoo handbook, I recommend using Dark Reader because they don't have a dark mode, which, um, come on guys, the ArchWiki has a dark mode, you can too, if you guys are that much better than Arch users. Um, choosing, <laughs> choosing, so yeah, I just followed the handbook. And essentially what the process looks like is you partition the disk, you mount the different file systems, and then you copy a stage three tarball. So what that looks like is, uh, if I go to downloads, uh, these are stage three, ta stage three tarballs. Like in my case, I copied the link to this desktop profile, OpenRC, uh, copy link address, and then inside slash MNT slash Gen2, which is where like I mounted the XFS partition, uh, I would do wget and then this file. And then once I downloaded it, um, what I did was... Uh, what I did was um, the name of the file, so tar xpvf, and then the name of the file dot tar. I think it maybe had dot gz on the end, and then I would do dash dash numeric. Actually, why am I showing you this? Because you got to follow the handbook if you want to successfully install Gen two. So yeah, I'm not going to show you how to install Gen2, but yeah, essentially I copied over files, and that's how you, that's why people say they can install Gen2 from anything, is because Gen2 doesn't have its own installer, you are the installer. And it's not that hard either, you just follow a step-by-step -step guide in the handbook and you're done, really. Now, I will say there are some things in the handbook, like for example when it comes to installing your kernel and firmware. Uh, as of now, um, like as of right now, I install the kernel first and then the firmware, whereas it instructs you to install the firmware then the kernel. Uh, and the reason I install the kernel first is for whatever reason the firmware tries to pull in the source, uh, like the source kernel, whereas uh, I want to install Gen2 kernel bin. So I installed the kernel first, so the firmware sees that I have a kernel installed, so it doesn't try and install uh, a kernel itself. I don't know, seems like a dependency issue there. Um, but yeah, no biggie. Now, some pet peeves I have with Gen2, these are very small, like, none of you will probably care, but one, Emerge is written in Python. And I'm not just, like, I'm not spewing bullshit. Like, I, there is a reason why this bugs me. And the reason is that Emerge is a freaking package manager. So, Python is an interpreted language. Compilers, like compiled languages, have the ability to see syntax errors everywhere in the program. So you'll never get runtime syntax errors in compiled languages because syntax is just a middleman for the binary. Like, the syntax ultimately gets compiled into binary. Whereas in interpreted language, the syntax is interpreted at runtime. So you get syntax errors at runtime sometimes. This is really bad. So, I'm not... so. As far as I know, Emerge doesn't have issues like this because it's been around for a while. But, you know, I will get errors where, like, it's a Python error. And I don't really, I don't really want to figure out why that's happening because I don't want to go debug Python code. But, yeah, it kind of bugs me that Emerge is written in interpreted language. Also, for whatever reason, the Emerge-A-DepClean, uh... Command, sure, pretend. Uh, it tried to remove Python from my system. And obviously, I did not let that happen. Oh, look, a lot of unused things here. Obviously, I did not let that happen because that would mean if Python wasn't on the system, uh, Emerge wouldn't work. So obviously, I did not let that happen. Um, yeah. So, that is really it. Gen 2 is um, not all that, like, it's not all that impressive.
it's another distribution that does things better than Arch, I think. It's, so, like, if someone says, I use Gentoo, by the way, like, it's not really all that much of a flex, because Gentoo, despite what people like uh, others to think, Gentoo is actually quite easy to install. You just follow steps in the handbook, and then boom, you're done. And with uh, binary packages, it only took me, like, two hours to install Gentoo the, to this machine, and that's, like, a full install with all the programs I use and stuff. Like, it really did not take that long at all. Like, I had a Mate desktop up and running in, like, two hours. And where it got long is where I installed literally everything. So, like, when I ran my Rebos Gen Current build to install everything via Rebos, that took a long time because, uh, let me just pull up Fast Fetch again. Uh, oh. Okay, this install is actually significantly less bloated than some of my other installs. But yeah, I have a lot of packages, and Rebus had to install them all, and it took a while to just build some of the packages with mismatching use flags to the binary package, or just like no binary package to begin with, which most of the things that take ages to uh, build do have a binary package. Um, so like, and some things that are a little weird is if you're a Firefox user, uh, uh, you have to use Firefox bin if you don't want to build Firefox from source, which is a little weird. I feel like that's a bit of a legacy thing, though. Um, oh, yeah, you can see, all, like, all the freaking use flags on Firefox. Uh, so, like, for example, uh, let's see here, um, Wayland, the Wayland use flag. So if I built Firefox from source here, oh, also Firefox bin has the Wayland use flag. I have Wayland as a global use flag, so Firefox supports Wayland if I install it. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this little ranty video. I just wanted to get something out there, you know, because I haven't posted in a while. And I also switched to Gentoo, and I know some people will love that, especially you, Josh. Hi, Tenley J. if you see this video, hi. Go ahead and leave a comment so I know you saw this video uh, all the way to the end. But anywho, with that, guys, I'm done. I've been Oglo the Nerd. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell. Uh, it helped this video a lot, so, like, leave a comment to boost engagement. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content about Linux and tech and programming and stuff. Uh, and I don't mean the soy dev stuff like JavaScript. I mean the real stuff like Rust, C, you know, all that. Like the real, real stuff. Um, you know, like just, yeah, you, you get the point. I also have a Patreon, by the way. So if you go to my website, oglo.dev, I have all my links here, so like my GitLab repos and Codeberg and, you know, everything. Even my Discord server, if you like uh, chatting on Discord, which it has more than 100 members and it's fairly active. Like, I'll check in on Discord and see there's new messages in the server. So, Patreon. I have a Patreon. Um, the memberships are... So, I have a $1 a month membership with two members on it. I have a $5 a month membership with two members on it. Uh, a $10 a month membership with no one on it. And then, please, I like don't select this, just because um, this I added this as a meme. Only select it if you're like filthy rich or something. Um, but $100 a month. <laughs> um, there are no special perks right now. I just really appreciate the domain like I don't like paywalling anything I believe that if you like my content and you want to see me succeed go ahead and leave me a patreon subscription um, if you like doing that kind of thing so it's optional obviously uh, but if you want to support me financially uh, you can subscribe to my patreon and this isn't I, I'm 15, so I won't be pulling out this money yet, but when I'm 18, I'll be able to pull out this money, and it'll be amazing. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you for watching this video. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell, you know, all that stuff. 
subscribe to my Patreon if you feel inclined. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.